Well, many people remember their first car. Many also remember their first tractor. In today's feature segment, we have the man responsible for designing two of America's iconic tractors. Harold Brock led the teams that produced the Ford N-Series and the John Deere 4020 Series. Through his work with Henry Ford, Brock got to know some of this nation's greatest inventors, including Thomas Edison and George Washington Carver. Mark DeMarcus' Chris Gurley produced this story before Brock passed away at the age of 96 in 2011. Mr. Ford had an insatiable desire to get rid of animals, and uh, in 1939, there were still 19 million animals being used on farms, and he said, well, we need a utility tractor that will replace the horse, do more things than just cultivate. When he gave me the assignment, he said, well, uh, if you can design and we can produce a tractor that won't sell for any more than uh, uh, the, a team of animals, the harness, and the 10 acres of land it takes to feed the animals, uh, that would be good for the farmer because he could use then the 10 acres to raise food for himself or other people. Uh, so that was a challenge and that price was $585. Though Harold Brock never earned high school or college degrees, he is credited with designing what many consider two of the most important tractors in the history of agriculture, the Ford 9N series and the John Deere 4020. Brock began his career at Ford as a student at the Henry Ford Technical School in Dearborn, Michigan. There he learned about electrical engineering, pattern making, and chemistry invaluable skills needed in the production of a car. They said, what do you want to be? And I said, oh, well, I want to be an engineer. And I was fortunate because then they assigned me to Mr. Ford as my apprentice foreman at 15. I served at Mr. Ford's knee as, as an apprentice to him plus his handful of skilled technicians. Because he was Henry Ford's apprentice, Brock met some of the 20th century's most important inventors and visionary thinkers, including Thomas Edison and George Washington Carver. Carver was having us eat soup and bread and that made out of soybeans and, and also Carver was wanting Mr. Ford to be on a, a green fiber diet and he'd go out and pick up plant life and bring in, we'd have grass sandwiches for lunch and he said, that, there's no such thing as a weed, it's just a plant in the wrong place. And so Carver was an excellent person for, to work with. In addition to mechanical and metallurgical research, thought and study in the field of chemistry have for years been devoted to the development of new uses for farm products. Until today, the American farmer helps to build motor cars, just as the motor car manufacturer helps to make farming more efficient and convenient. They help each other and that helps the country. One of the most interesting of these harvests, because it shows the trend, is soybeans. For every million cars produced, 600,000 bushels are used annually for the manufacture of enamels and for plastics, electrical parts and similar parts. Known best as the inventor of the modern assembly line, Henry Ford was also a pioneer in the development of soybeans and soy foods. The suit he's wearing in this picture, taken in 1941, is a blend of 25% soybean fibers and 75% wool. It was Ford's intention that he would someday grow rather than mine an automobile. So when Ford put Brock in charge of tractor engineering at the age of 25, one of his tasks was to replace the tractor's metal seat with something more organic. Because the little steel seat on the little Ford tractor was, oh, that thing was designed maybe 150 years ago, and, and it cost 38 cents to produce. And, and Mr. Ford said to me, well, why don't you make it out of soybeans? It'll be more comfortable in the winter and the summer for heat and cold. And of course, you never said you wouldn't do it, so I did it. And he asked me, well, how much does it cost? And I'd have to say $2.50. He said, well, we'll keep working on it to try to get the cost down. Well, then I, I had to tell him that the rodents were eating the seat right out from underneath the farm because they like soybeans. So, so that killed that. Other endeavors, however, were successful. In 1938, as head of tractor engineering, Brock was put in charge of the development of the Ford 9N tractor. 
The tractor was a collaboration between Henry Ford and Harry Ferguson. It was a deal sealed with a handshake, with Brock caught in the middle. Of course, then I had to tell them that I was following their advice because they never got together as a group. <laughs> so, so I had a little problem with, you know, pleasing them all that I was following their advice. The tractor incorporated the Ferguson hitch, an innovation designed to prevent the tractor from flipping over and killing the operator if the plow got hung up on a rock. Brock managed to have the tractor in production in just six months. When the U.S. entered World War II, instead of designing tractors, Brock found himself designing Sherman tanks and Ford Jeeps. However, once the fighting ended, Brock began working on the iconic Ford 8N, an all-purpose tractor that would be widely used on farms and construction sites. Between 1947 and 1952, Ford sold over 500,000 8Ns. There's a big pent-up demand for farm equipment after the war, and so that little tractor, the 8N red gray tractor, uh, we produced 100,000 a year, which was 25% of the total tractor market with one tractor. Brock left Ford to work for John Deere in 1959. A disagreement over a poorly designed transmission that was failing stress tests was the cause of his departure. And I was holding it up, wouldn't approve it. And finally, they came to me and said, we want to put it in production. And I said, well, you better get yourself a new chief engineer. And they did. They fired me and all my test people. <laughs> so when I went to Deere and new generation tractors, they said, well, Ford's going to come out with a power shift transmission. We won't have one on our tractor. And I said, well, don't worry about it. It won't work. And uh, so I said, we'll design a power shift transmission that really works. Brock became Deere's first worldwide director of engineering. And while he was in charge, Deere overtook International Harvester as the industry leader. While working for Deere, he helped found the Hawkeye Institute of Technical Learning, borrowing $500 to help start the college in Waterloo, Iowa. In 2008, a new student center was built and named in his honor. And in 2010, the man who never earned a degree received an honorary Doctor of Science degree from Iowa State University for his contributions both to agriculture and education. I think you need education, you know. I'm, I'm all for education, not to, well, you would never have the opportunities that I had. Harold Brock passed away in early January of 2011 at the age of 96. While the man is gone, his contributions to agriculture will be with us for quite some time. I'm just happy to give credit to all of my people in both the ag and automotive group that helped me accomplish what I accomplished. So it didn't come by me only. And go to our Farm Week website, Facebook page, or YouTube page if you want to watch that again.